Hello everybody, this is Andrea, certified tour guide in Minsk, Belarus. The country here has a privilege of being an off-the-beaten-track destination, but this creates problems of its own. Uh, people, especially Western travelers, frequent travelers, experienced ones, often ask how is the safety, how is infrastructure and how is the language issue uh, going to be handled. Uh, I've just had a recent uh, trip to ancestral villages uh, by one of the American travelers and her friend, uh, Barbara and Vicky. Let's hear what they have to say about these issues. Getting here the first time was very difficult. Um, we, I had the, the old visa process, which was getting invitation, getting the visa done at home. Um, so it was a long, lengthy process. I didn't live close to an embassy. The medical insurance that one needs to get to Belarus, it just seemed difficult compared to the way that Americans usually travel. You know, we just usually pick up and go, and there's not a lot of difficulty with it. So that was difficult. This time was simpler for two reasons. One, it was my second time, so everything's always easier the second time. And the new visa um, regulations that Belarus has put into um, operation that you can be in Belarus for five days, um, no pre-visa needed. Um, you can come, but you have to fly in and out of the Minsk airport. So you can't drive over the border or come by train even, I believe, you must fly in and out of Minsk. So um, that was very easy. Uh, flew into Minsk, uh, went through control. Um, I had previously bought travel insurance that indicated that Belarus was covered, so I didn't have to stop. But if you don't have it, there is a, there is a, a, a counter there, yeah, exactly, that has a, has a place for you to buy the insurance for while you're here. And you pass through the controls and off you go. So, Barbara, generally speaking, with a visa or on this five-day visa free mode through the airport, uh, arrival doesn't bring any hurdles like any searches, hold-ups, interviews or anything like, a, uh, let's say, an average American might expect uh, based on Hollywood movies about the Soviet <laughs> Union. No, not, not at all. <laughs> According to one of the theories, Belarusians or white Russians were named because of these shirts, uh, white with a little touch of red embroidery. The other theory says that they're very hospitable people. And uh, another concern of travelers, especially travelers who are visiting ancestral areas, is how our people, local people, are going to meet them. And uh, I'm always happy to see that our people in the countryside, perhaps the last authentic Belarusians or Poles in Western Belarus, are really very open-hearted, they're really hospitable, they invite you into their home and they will try to tell you the stories that they know and help you as much as they can to track down your ancestry. Uh, so, uh, you've just been to Grodno and Grodno area, what are your general impressions of the place? People, safety, climate, nature? Um, fabulous. Um, I, I loved it. Yeah, I felt very, very safe there the whole time. The climate was very nice. It was warm while I was here. Everybody we met was very, very generous and very, very nice and uh, helpful to us. Uh, as I said previously, unfortunately, I don't speak any Russian, so uh, I had to depend on using my English, and I'm not accustomed to traveling in, uh, in countries where I don't speak. So you might want to definitely consider, you know, having somebody with you that uh, speaks Russian because uh, my trip went very, very smoothly, but I don't think that would have been... Uh, it wouldn't have been quite as smooth if I hadn't had uh, uh, a guide with me to speak Russian. There were many places we got where a couple words of English will not do what you need to do. Uh, safety. The people, safety. The people, the people, very kind, very sweet, very open. Uh, I really enjoyed that. The climate's been great. I thought it was going to be really hot here. It's been uh, low 70s, I think. High 60s and safety and safety is fabulous. I feel good. Yeah, I think driving is is fine. The actual driving and the roads, 
again, for me, what would be the problem are the signs. Um, you can't expect to come and find all of the signs in Russian and English. So just finding the street signs or the village signs that you're looking for, if you don't know in advance exactly the name of them, you're not going to be able to find them. But the actual driving uh, was good. Roads were good. Uh, traffic was good. Yeah. Yes, uh, I thought it was really good. We, the, our driver uh, really knows the area, felt uh, I felt comfortable that we weren't going to be stranded somewhere, so uh, the safety was really good. I appreciated that. А говорят, что там романчуки живут где-то рядом с дорогой. Вот нам сказали, что есть кто-то еще. Есть еще недалеко? Ну там видите, я не живу, теле. Их нема никого. Ты куда дом стоит? И уже эти дома есть и городские купили. Так никого там нема. А еще романчуки где-то в Святке живут где-то в Вратичах. Как? Да в Вратичах можно. Есть там романчуки, але видите, як як кто с кем связан, я не могу сказать вам точно. Как еще раз деревня называется? Воловичовцы. Воловичовцы. А почему она так называется? Пан какой-то такой был или? Да, это был пан Святка, это давно было. Был пан такий в Святку, потом ему на эту землю раздал людям. There was a landlord in Svyatsk, he gave these landlords to people. И назвал деревня Воловичовцы. And called the place Воловичовцы. Это тоже, это мой муж рассказал, это уже с дома. More like a folk story my husband told me. This is my grandfather. То ее, то ее дедушка. На телефоне. Видите, хорошо? Станислав. Станислав. Барбара ищет романчуков. А каких романчуков? А хоть каких. Как какие постарше, которые по самым местным хамам. Um, I'm very interested in finding the ancestral village of my grandfather who left here in 1903. I'm on many different genealogy groups and everyone will tell you the first thing you must do is do your homework in the United States. Check everything you can find there, stories, census, archives, uh, family, um, genealogy societies, historical societies. Do all of your research there. You can't expect just to come here and drive around and find an ancestral village or just to pop into a church and hope to find records. You really need to do your pre-work before you get here. Uh, uh, did you uh, get hold of the World National Historic Archive? Um, I've sent them an email a few months ago, so I haven't heard anything back yet. Um, I know that sometimes it takes a while to hear something back from them, so I'm just trying to be patient as we all learn to be when we're requesting things. But, but I did send an email. I tried to send them as much information as I already had so that they would be able to look in the right places. Yeah, that's good. Well, uh, they must reply within 14 days. They read English, by the way, and if something didn't work, I'll follow up on that. No worries. Thank you. I don't remember well, but his grandfather went to America. I'm asking which year. Uh, so he died somewhere in the mines in America. Manchu Valeri was the name. I don't remember his uh, father's name. А вот вашего папу как звали? Эдвард. Эдвард Романчук. His father. А в каком году родился? 1906 born. Here. So, Barbara, who was your grandfather? Бабушка. Станислав. Станислав Романчук в 1903 году уехал до Америки. Вы за Станислава Романчука. Что-нибудь, может, знаете? I was born in 29. What the hell do you expect? Самая старая, вот она может что знать, а так мы не... So my, 
My mother's father was. Его, смотрите в эту, во, Ивановна. My mother's father was in America. Они не понимают. Они не понимают. Они американцы. Я вам говорю, что тут не мать такого, а але ты романчук водили то во старшего старшего. Ну Эдвард Табачко. Эдвард Табачко. Да. И вот там и погиб. Uh, so Stanislav Romanchuk left for America in 1903. Yes. Ну, в общем, он, уехал до Америки, and he was from Sviatsk. Yes. Он был со Святска. Он написал в карте, что он был со Святска. А в Марковцах Романчуков не было? Марковцы is not too close, but there are some Romanchuks there too. Obviously, you exchanged, and uh, it's quite easy to, to exchange money. Uh, what are your thoughts about money? How easy to use it? Uh, cards in wide use, tipping, and everything? Uh, generally, very easy. Um, of course, we started here in Minsk, so um, and we're here at the the President Hotel. Um, so there's a place here just to exchange money, which we did. Um, they're using the credit card is not a problem at all. We used it many places. We even stopped at gas stations on the way, used our credit card. Um, we were in a lot of very, very teeny tiny villages uh, where we actually didn't buy anything. We were more tourists. But even in a small town when we were in Sapotskin, um, we, used, um, uh, we used our cash there and uh, we didn't really seem to have any trouble but I would always carry some local currency and cash on you at all times not depend on your credit card when you're out of the cities. I didn't seem to have any problem with it. Coins are always a little bit of a problem for Americans because we don't use coins the way that um, Europeans use coins but, um, but no I thought it was pretty easy to to use actually. I didn't have a problem with it. I, I thought it was interesting to how easy it was to, to uh, use our credit card. I thought there was going to be a problem, especially I don't know how they translate $100 versus how much is that in, in your money. So uh, that's about all I have to say. <laughs> oh, it's very much about your bank rather than our translations. Yeah. True. <laughs> Guys, what about food? Did you like the breakfast and uh, restaurant meals? I thought they were all really, really good. Everywhere we went was good food and good choices of food. and. Um, I, I was very, very pleased with the selection, and most of the time, um, menus were in Russian and English, or someone was there to help you um, decipher what the what the food was, or you could simply look at pictures too. I was going to say the price Not is very all. reasonable. Very, very reasonable here in Belarus. Surprisingly so. Yes. Continuing on safety, do you think uh, it's reasonable to have someone here with uh, not just knowledge of Russian language, but some your man on the ground, so to speak, uh, your right hand, who that can complete things after you've left or arrange them before you have come? Yeah, I think that's one of the most important things for me because I was planning this trip just to come by myself. Um, and it's a long way to go and it's a country we're not very familiar with. So to me, when you're planning your trip, one of the most important things is to be really knowledgeable of the guide that you are going to be working with. Make sure that you know him and her and um, make sure that you've contacted with them and talked with them for quite a long time because you will need them here uh, for helping uh, on your arrangements on the ground here and just to make sure you're arrangements leaving are all set and that you're ready to go. It's been a valuable resource and, and without my guide uh, I would not have made this trip but I felt very very comfortable with my guide and uh, my guide lived up to uh, all of my expectations but feel comfortable with the person that you're coming with. I think you have your suspicions memorized by now. 
Absolutely. I was just nervous about coming here. Not that the country's a bad place, it's just I'm nervous about it, especially when neither one of us can speak the language. So it's nice to have a guide you could trust make sure he's saying things what you know what you want to out of this trip that he that he's saying to other people that we meet uh, so I appreciate that and trust is very important to me and it was earned